Oregon has become the first state to issue a license for a magic mushroom therapy treatment center. In 2020, the state was the first to legalize hallucinogen known as psilocybin for personal use for adults 21 and older. Studies have shown shrooms are successful in treating a variety of health issues like severe depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and anxiety. For more on this, I'm joined by Angela Albee. She is the manager of the Oregon Psilocybin Services section. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much, happy to be here. Angela, this is such an interesting concept. Explain how this is gonna work and who might be using these centers. The Oregon Psilocybin Services Act uh, created the first uh, regula regulated framework for psilocybin services in the nation. And it establishes four license types, which are all regulated by the Oregon Health Authority. Um, first, it, licensed manufacturers will cultivate or process psilocybin products. Licensed laboratories will test those psilocybin products for potency and to ensure the appropriate species is used. And then those products will be transferred to licensed service centers. Licensed service centers are the only place, the only location where clients can actually purchase or consume psilocybin products. And they have to stay for a minimal duration of time at a licensed service center under the supervision of a licensed facilitator who's there to support them throughout three different parts of psilocybin services, which includes preparation, the administration session, and then follow-up integration. And I wonder if there are any risks or harms associated with taking a magic mushroom. Well, there's uh, there's a lot of research that has been really gaining momentum in recent years. However, the risks are still somewhat unknown. Um, some risks or effects include mild headache, fatigue, nausea, uh, perceptual issues, elevated heart rate, in, in, you know, increased blood pressure. Um, however, there's about 90 pages of rules that the Oregon Health Authority adopted in, at the end of the year, last year, that really focus on client safety. Um, because this is not a medical or clinical model, um, we had to work closely with our psilocybin advisory board on recommendations and really think about all aspects of keeping clients safe as they're accessing services. You know, I'm interested to know a bit more about the stigma around uh, using magic mushrooms because we know that that stigma still exists for things like marijuana here in the U.S., even though it's been legalized in more than 20 states. Uh, are, there have, are there any challenges when it comes to um, using psilocybin in this way and getting people to subscribe to this? Well, I would say that I'm sure that there's a lot of bias and stigma against psilocybin as this is the first reg you know, legalized regulatory framework that's been established um, and has already begun licensing. Uh, I do think that there's a lot of education and, you know, if people are interested, they can go to our website and visit the scientific literature review that's been uh, posted, as well as cultural and anthropological information. Psilocybin has been used for thousands of years by some indigenous and tribal communities. And so even though the legalized framework just was, uh, you know, created in Oregon um, and has been codified into law, this is not a new conversation. And so um, it's really important that we provide education. Um, this is only for clients 21 years of age or older. There are certain uh, prohibitions for certain clients and accessing services, and all of the licensed facilitators have to be trained through specific psilocybin facilitator training programs. Um, but there are a number of challenges um, working with a Schedule One substance if uh, businesses want to be licensed. Um, there can be challenges with, with insurance, banking, tax filing, and just you know, other general challenges related to being a business. I wonder if the U.S. has pushed back, the government has pushed back in any way on this because it is still uh, illegal under federal law. Part of the provision of the Oregon Psilocybin Services Act uh, required that the Oregon Psilocybin Advisory Board attempt to meet with the U.S. Attorney for Oregon. And so, um, you know, that letter has been sent. And I think that, you know, we will continue to work with our federal partners um, if there are questions or concerns. Um, but there's a lot of movement in the psilocybin space and the psychedelic space in the U.S. And so I think that, um, you know, we'll continue uh, watching and, and really trying to 
provide good information on our website um, as you know we progress and move forward. Okay, we'll have to leave it there for now. Angela, thanks so much for your time and insight. Thank you.